Roll tape. Roll tape. That's right. So uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Cut to the Chase webinar series. Uh, this is part four on securing the modern workplace, security, compliance, and visualization in the Microsoft Cloud. So we've got a great demonstration happening, and this is uh, an ongoing uh, technical training series that's been put on by our partner community. Special thanks to Jason and the team from Model Technology for leading this call today. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to uh, Jason Rutherford, uh, the managing partner for Model Technologies, to lead us through this demonstration. Jason, the floor yeah. is yours. Hey, thanks, Jeff. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So welcome, as Jeff said, to the final installment of our webinar series that's presented by Microsoft and Model Technology. And so the focus of this series was securing the modern workplace. And in sessions one through three, which I believe Jeff has the recordings for and you can obtain if you're interested, uh, we discussed a lot of new technology and processes um, within the technology to keep your environment secure. Technologies such as Windows 10, Windows Defender ATP, and processes to ensure the oper oper operationalization of, of new technologies like Windows as a Service is implemented properly within your organization. While there are a lot of different tools and technologies and processes to implement, um, which might be webinars down the road, this session is really focused on consuming and interpreting and displaying the data in your environment that dis depicts your security posture, right? And so the premise of this presentation is really to depict that security posture, whether it's in a cloud like Azure or whether it's on-prem. And so uh, today we're going to talk about how we're going to accomplish that using some of the Microsoft tools. But let's dive into the agenda. So. We have a short agenda, but a lot of content within the agenda. And so the PowerPoint, the intent of the PowerPoint is really to lay a base foundation of information. And then the meat of this presentation is going to be in the reports and in the demo. Okay, so I will go through a brief introduction of who I am and who model technology uh, as a company. And then we'll talk about the Azure Security Center overview, which is a big piece of the demo that we're going to be going through today. We'll talk about our Azure and Power BI. And we'll talk about how those two things kind of come together to form real-time dashboards. We'll go through a demo of those pieces, and we'll leave time at the end, hopefully, for some Q&A. So um, as you have questions, we obviously want you to get the most out of our session time together today. So as you have questions, you can post those in the chat, um, and Jeff and his team will try to answer those as real-time as possible. And then uh, at the end, if there's something that cannot be answered, we can either take it as a takeaway or we can ask me towards the end. We should have plenty of time. So, okay, so a little bit about model technology. So we have really two different divisions. We have a consulting division and a managed services division. And so in the consulting side of the house, we have a team of experts that are ready to identify, design, build, and operationalize technology for you and your organization. If you were to break it down from a uh, a tool set perspective. We do a lot of work in Azure, so OMS, IaaS, EMS. We do a lot of work in System Center, um, so the System Center across the stack, integrating um, different components into it, writing custom workflows around it. And then Windows 10 and Windows deployments do a lot of those as well. Uh, from the managed services side, the managed services side is really a an extension of your team for managing different aspects of your organization. So. Um, we do a lot of system center management, so Windows 10 oper operationalization, a lot of application distribution, packaging, application deployments, monthly server and or workstation patching fall into that wheelhouse as well, um, PowerShell DSC, SLA reporting, and really the intent is to take a lot of the, the monthly burden off of your internal folks to help them engineer solutions that drive your business forward and take some of more of the mundane, repeatable tasks that can be automated and, uh, and model have uh, knocked those out for you. But overall, we stay pretty focused in our swim lanes and we specialize in really building the right solution for your organization from a tool set. Um, and a key piece of that is partnering with you along the way, right? And so we're also a Microsoft Gold Partner, Silver Partner, um, uh, been around since about 2014. So. A little bit about me, so I am the managing partner of Model Technology. Uh, this is my 17th year in IT, most of it in the consulting realm. Uh, I've got a couple of kids and a lovely wife. Uh, I am a CrossFit enthusiast, just ask me and I'll talk to you about it for days. 
Um, it seems like forever ago, and I think I mentioned this before, but I was the technical editor of the Mastering System Center Configuration Manager 2007 R2 book from Cybex. And then more recently, I was a contributor on the white paper, the release pipeline model, which is a, a DevOps paper on Windows Server and how to apply that theory. Um, so a little bit about me, but let's dive into some of the content here. So the Azure Security Center. So let's take a look at what that is. And so um, several nice things about the Security Center, but from a definition standpoint, it provides a unified security layer and kind of threat protection across different hybrid cloud workloads. Now, what does that really mean? Well, what that means is it gives you a platform for insights into your security posture from different aspects. So if you think about all the different tooling or the different aspects you can have a security posture in, things like applications, storage, compute, network, there needs to be a way to kind of look at all those pieces holistically and kind of drill through them. And so that's really what Security Center provides you. Whether your infrastructure is on premise, whether it's in Azure, or whether it's in some other cloud provider, it really doesn't matter where your infrastructure resides because you can leverage Azure and the Security Center component to manage and inform you about different aspects of those environments, which is really nice. So if we take a look at um, what you can do with it, we'll take a, a, a deeper look at these during a demo. But you basically, you configure what you want checked and what recommendations that you want in a workflow. And then, again, we're going to look at this in the demo, but it's called a security policy. And those security policies apply across your workloads regardless of where those workloads reside. So when you think in terms of VMs, right, you want all your VMs to run against the best practices analyzer and have them tell you what the recommendation should be for the specific technology that's in those VMs. Well, doing that in Azure and doing that on-prem, you would probably suspect that those might be different workloads or different tool sets or different dashboards, and they really kind of come together in Security Center, which, again, we'll take a deeper look at. When we talk about why you'd want to use Azure Security Center to get into some of the um, some of the security posture visualizations, there's a couple of key pieces that I'm really going to touch on, and the rest you can kind of you know research on your own or we can talk afterwards. But the centralized policy management and then the actionable recommendations are two very large reasons to leverage the security center. We'll talk about those now. So the security uh, centralized policy management. So again, you talk about regulatory requirements or compliance with your company's policy, regardless of where the workloads reside. I've heard from a lot of our customers that it's difficult to understand where things are from, um, you know, how they how they true up against our policies if they're in a cloud or if they're on-prem, and where do we get that single point of workload to, to view that kind of data, right? So this is where um, Security Center was kind of born out of. And if you see here in the graphic, you can do things like get recommendations on disk encryption or security groups or web application firewalls from the Azure side, system updates, um, IaaS components from the VM side, right? So these are some of the policies you can enable or disable um, Per, per subscription. So the nice thing about the actionable piece of it is let's say that you go into the recommendations and you can see in the screenshot, which again, we're gonna take a look at here in the demo, but it starts giving you recommendations and then how many resources apply to that recommendation. So the top one that they have there is the endpoint protection is not installed on Azure VMs. And in this case, in that picture, there's six VMs that that applies to, right? And so you could take that same data and if it, if you look down, I think, I'm not sure this one has it, I have it in my demo, but we have a endpoint protection is not installed on non-Azure VMs as a category inside of my demo that I'll show you to show you how we kind of sew the two environments together to get that single kind of pane of glass. But um, again, based on the technology leverage, the recommendations will adapt and they'll adhere to some of the industry standard recommendations for the technology, which is nice. Um, so Azure Security Center is the first piece we're going to look at. The next piece we're going to look at is the um, the Power BI components, right? Now, like I said, we're going to move quickly through the PowerPoint because I want to get into the dashboarding and reporting demos because there's some cool things to show. But um, we're going to take a look at the, the dashboards from Power BI. And so when you take um, – if we kind of boil it down, right, it enables you to view your efforts in a, re in a visual representation. So take Azure and Power BI, and you can take um, a lot of that data and put it into real-time insights for your business, things like cloud-based or on-prem-based, right? And so I'll show you both of those today and how they kind of come together. 
Um, you can do straightforward or complex environments or dashboards, which we'll show you both of those today. Single source or massively scaled and warehouse or real time. And so there's a lot of different avenues to take when you're using Power BI. And so we'll take a look at how some of this data comes together. But out of the box, this is some of the nice stuff, that it's got a multitude of different connections available. And so I've got highlighted here all of the Azure components that are available, which make it incredibly easy. And we're going to build a report on the fly today. It makes it incredibly easy to build these reports based on the data that you're getting from your environment. And so one of the things that we'll look at and build a report from is taking a machine that's on-prem that's been implemented with OMS, so it's got log analytics against it, and we'll take that data, we'll build a report, and then we'll publish it to our web so that we have a report that's real-time in the web. So whether you're connecting a few Azure data sources or a single on-prem data source like SQL to get a, a different representation, um, or you're connecting multiple aggregated environments to get some really complicated dashboards um, in a real-time stream or in a report um, that's refreshed, uh, you, you've managed to get there through Power BI, right? So you can get as, as simplified and as complicated as you need to get for your environment. All right. So with that, we are at the demo portion already of our of our time together, which is fantastic. So because I much prefer to be in a demo than I do to be in PowerPoint. So. We're going to start with a general tour of uh, Security Center. So here I am in my Azure subscription, and I've just went into the overview section for Security Center. Okay, and we're going to take a look at first at some of the general recommendations to improve your security posture and your environment. Um, so let's take a look. If we kind of go down here to the prevention area, there's a lot of different tabs that we're going to go through, but if we go into the recommendations area. And just to give you an idea of what I have done and what I have not done, I have simply, I have some VMs in Azure, I have some VMs that are implemented in OMS, and I have some VMs that have ATP configured for Windows 10. That is all I've done, right? So and besides enabling uh, the subscription, I've taken no more action. But let's take a look at some of the pieces that I get out of this. And so if we take a look at endpoint, the, the example that I brought up during the presentation, so endpoint protection is not installed in some Azure VMs. If I click on here, I can see that I have two VMs. And from this section here, I can install that on my two VMs. Now, this was a um, Azure-based um, Windows 10 box that I had put together. And so it had it's an IaaS component, so it has not got the uh, endpoint protection installed or configured, so I can install it on those VMs. Now, if you notice, you can say endpoint protection not installed or configured on non-Azure components as well. This is one of those points that I had talked about during the presentation or the slide portion of it. And you can see that that's in a different workspace name, and it's in my demo, um, which those machines are not that important. So we're not going to dive into that, but it does show on-prem machines when you go into um, that location there. If we take a look at... Um, uh, just uh, one more piece of clarification here, that those machines have been onboarded into OMS. And so when you think of either hybrid cloud on-prem environments, OMS is really the linchpin that takes all of this data and makes it very possible to get your security posture analyzed in this method, right? Um, so let's take a look at a couple of additional items and some of the recommendations. So if we kind of uh, look down here, we have things about disk encryption, JIT access into machines, and we'll take disk encryption, for example, because we're in the high severity. And notice any of these, you can dismiss or reopen the, the alerts on these. And so when, once you dismiss it, you've, you've identified that as a not important issue, and you can reopen it if you need to. But the high security um, recommendations here are based on what's going on in the environment. So we have a next-gen firewall, for an example, um, for our Azure VM. So it's got no uh, additional Azure firewall in the middle. But if we go back to the apply disk encryption, you get instructions on how to enable disk encryption on the virtual machine, for example. So when you take a look at the recommendations and then how to rectify some of the security requirements that or rec recommendations they've given you, it's all kind of in that single pane of glass, which is nice. Um, if we go down into the system updates, that's one that people tend to want to know more about. There's system updates so you can see that which ones are missing. Um, this update or this update, and there's a lot of different views to go into for security updates, so we're going to go into those in a little bit. 
Um, one of the other pieces that I really like in here is the remediate security configuration. And so I want to spend a little bit of time here, right? So we have different rules that are running, and they have a different severity that are tied to those rules. So whether they're critical, warning, or informational. Now, again, I'd like to remind you, I did not set these up, right? So these are out-of-the-box pieces that run against our environment. But if I take the severity of the rule and I go down to critical, based on the either implemented through OMS or it's an Azure VM or it's been um, implemented on ATP platform, you can see that I have a recommendation to disable SMB version 1 on a server that applies to six different servers, right? So we can sort here by registry key, security policy, or IAS. The same is true here. So just because there's IIS running on the box, we can come down here and see what our critical severities are that are suggesting that we may not necessarily be aligned with the best security practice um, with what we have running in our environment. So um, a lot of folks tend to rely on their engineers to make these tweaks and changes, which is, which is fine, but it's a good way to kind of true up against what we think we have in our environment and what we actually have running in our environment, right? So all of, the, all of these things are configured for us somewhat in an automated fashion, but the security policy is what dictates what gets kind of added into those, into those recommendations or into those security settings. And so, for example, let's say you use a different endpoint protection on all your virtual machines. Maybe you want to disable endpoint protection um, information on it because that could skew the numbers in your, um, in your security report. We'll let this load here for a second. So in our model production, you can see that we have a couple of different policy components. So we can automatically provision the monitoring agent when anything's brought into the environment. So that's going to be your OMS agent. We have it turned off because we typically pick and choose what we add into OMS for demo reasons for what we're demoing. <laughs> in our security policy section, we have things like system updates, security configuration, endpoint protection disk encryption. These are all of the recommendations that are in here to date, and these will continue to grow over time. But you can either turn them on or off per subscription. So for example, if I wanted to go into a different OMS instance that I have, I could turn I could turn off disk encryption or SQL encryption or other components that I may not necessarily want to know about or I might not do anything to rectify those. And so the policies are configured here. Um, in, in Azure Security Center. So kind of moving down, um, recommendations, we, we talked about a little bit, security solutions, these are services that integrate um, from a variety of aspects into your Azure environment. Well, let's jump on to compute for a minute. And so if we go into compute, we can see that there's some monitoring recommendations, so unmonitored VMs, monitoring agent health issues, unprotected computers, so any one of these you can drill through, for example, the endpoint protection computers, you can drill through and get a list of what's going on on those machines or get more information on them. So if we come back here and go to VMs and computers, I'm just going to pick our domain controller, for example, that we've left out into our Azure subscription. You can see a little bit of information about it. So this is in our model OMS um, production subscription. If we go into the apply th three security updates, you can see that there's three security updates missing on this VM, right? And so this information is coming from OMS and to our log analytics subscription. So again, that is kind of the linchpin that brings all of this data together. You can do things like save the search, add a new alert rule when this happens. So you can start taking some action uh, to be notified or some action to um, send emails out or automatically run a report with this data in it on a cadence or an interval, right? Um, let's go back to some of the events. Um, okay. So one of the things that I want to bring up is the identity and access, and this is a very useful solution for a lot of folks, kind of outside the reporting realm, but still good to know. So if you go into our identity posture, as you call it, 
you can see the 23 accounts have logged in, two have failed to log in, and here's our failed login accounts, okay? Logins over time, um, almost 10,000 successful and three failed. So that's a pretty good um, ratio that we'd like to keep in line for, for kind of identity and access pieces. Let me just scroll up back to that. And so one of the things that we're gonna come back to, but I wanna point out now is, so this is a good dashboard um, to kind of go into for failed account logins. And what we want to do is, let's say we wanna combine this dashboard, which I talked a little bit about in the presentation to another Power BI dashboard. Please note the Power BI button here that uh, is exposed for us. We're gonna come back and revisit that and create a report out of this. But I wanna bring that up that anytime you go into the log analytics, which is part of OMS, you get this Power BI button, which allows you to get the query, the underlying data, in a usable format to present it in Power BI. So when you're looking at some of these things, and so as an example, any of these items here, logins over time, if I wanted to click on that and get that query out of Power BI so that I could put that on a different dashboard, that button is right there, right? So we're actually gonna go through that and do that in a demo here in a few minutes. So back in Security Center, there's a couple of other pieces to point out that are worthy of, of taking note. So in the events arena, notice I have 1.6 million events in my production OMS. And while that may seem like a lot, you gotta remember that these are different events doing different things, but they're all aggregated for us. So some notable events, which again, I did not configure, but is, is really handy to have, is accounts created or enabled, right? Members added to enabled security groups. Security groups that are created or modified. Computers with vulnerabilities. Any one of these items on its own can be a very difficult thing to chase down in a holistic environment. So the more servers you onboard into OMS, the better your data is, right? Accounts that fail to log in. So we go take accounts that fail to log in and we can take a look at it. Um, you can see that I'm an account that failed to log in earlier today, I believe. And then we have the same two that we were looking at prior, right? So in the events area, the event correlation and aggregation to make sense of them, because when you start putting in an event correlation utility, you have to make sense of it or put it on a chart or interpret it in some fashion, right? So these are some of the pieces they've put together, and obviously you can create notable events and edit them and put all sorts of different data together for them. And again, if you wanted to export all those to Power BI, you get a Power BI button right here that you will get. So if you wanted to know who's changed their um, password in the last X amount of days and put it on a chart, there you go, right? Put it in Power BI. So um, enough talk about Power BI. Let's jump into Power BI for a few minutes. So Power BI, there's a couple of different versions of Power BI. There's a web version and there's the desktop version. And we're going to look at the web version first. So if you recall, um, my demo from Windows Defender ATP in one of the earlier sessions that we had together, um, I published this dashboard from the Windows Defender ATP um, website. Now what this dashboard is, is a real-time depiction of a post-breach analysis inside of my environment. It gives me some nice graphs, and this is a good starting point of data. But what does it mean? So if we go take a look at alert severity, so showing off some of the Power BI pieces, I clicked on the medium alert severity, and there's three instances of it, and here's the three instances of it. So my Surface Book uh, ran PowerShell in three different instances on the 13th with some suspicious activity, right? And so if I wanted to, and if I had enough different kind of data, I could do informational, I could do um, medium, I could do high severity if it was an actual piece of malware, the detection source, uh, severity and status are all items you can kind of filter on. Who it's assigned to, because again, it's an incident management component. And then the alert date, there's some filters on. But let's say I wanted to know more about what was actually going on. I can click the link, which jumps me back into my Windows Defender ATP portal to take some action on it, right? So some actions like, well, I want to investigate this alert or manage it uh, from this, this component here. I can see more details about what alert was ran and some recommended actions that I can take upon it. And here's the actual command that I ran that was suspicious, right? So being able to chase that down very quickly, looking at a dashboard, seeing that there's an alert, clicking through the alert to find out what command was ran and what was triggered to know that it, is it something that I care about or is it not? And then what processes on the machine happened for that to occur? 
all within a matter of minutes with using something like, for example, Power BI and Defender ATP, right? And so when you look at your security posture and your environment, being able to identify a breach is one thing. Being able to identify what the breach did after it executed in an environment is a completely other piece to the puzzle. And then displaying that data so that it's in a response mode that's very quick to action, right? So there's three kind of components to that. Um, so from Power BI, any of these items, you can do drill throughs or click tos or links to. So there's a lot of different components to this, right? But this is just one solution that we have in our Power BI arsenal. So what about things that are on-prem? Well, the iSurface book is clearly on-prem, so that's implemented with ATP, and that's how I get this data from it. But what about my main source of reporting, which is maybe my SCCM dashboard, right? So when I take models production SCCM, and I need to show a lot of data to a variety of people, this is a, a known community solution that's been implemented, and it gives you a starting point of all the different kinds of dashboards that you can draw, create, or make, or mimic from the environment. So just a couple of pieces to kind of point out here. Um, total number of clients, total number of users, our current health evaluation on all of our endpoints. If we go to client types, you can see computer or mobile, and if I want to learn more information about that, they have one Surface Book, one XPS 13950, one Precision. You can see all the models, so quickly kind of start seeing what environments you have um, in your SCCM infrastructure. If we come down to over here, notice I don't have any drill throughs, but it says computers with missing updates. So maybe that's something that I want to um, investigate a little more. We'll do. Uh, let's see here. For a moment. So on the bottom here, there's tabs. And those tabs are different reports or different components to the solution. So let's take, for example, I want to look at those update components that are um, those 14 machines with missing updates. Well, here's my 14 machines with missing updates. Maybe I only care about critical. Well, that gives us down to 13 machines that are missing updates. And here's the 13 machines that are missing the total of 42 updates, right? So you can see my SMA box and my WAP box are both missing quite a few updates, right? If you want to click on the update, you can click on it, and it'll link out to more information for it. Or if you want to click on a specific operating system for Windows 10, which Windows 10 systems have it, or which servers have the missing updates. So you can start seeing some of the power behind the analytics of either the machine selector, the KB selector, the severity selector, all very interactive in a usable kind of uh, picture format, for lack of a better term. Um, all from my on-prem environment. And in the same dashboard, I could embed things that are from my Azure environment, right? So there's nothing binding me to make this tile and this tile from the same source. I can make tiles from just about any source that I want to make. Um, from the SCCM uh, production dashboard uh, aspect, there's dashboards in the community solution for things like endpoint protection or antivirus enabled, malware detection, and this better be blank in my environment update compliance, and then finally, you have the software tab, which is a very helpful way to determine what legacy software you have to, again, adhere you to some kind of security posture, right? So if I wanted to sort, again, by machine to say, let's just look at my Surface Book and see what's installed on it, and let's just see what's installed by Adobe, you can see that what I have installed from Adobe on my, my Surface Book, right? If I uncheck that, I can click over here to say, well, let's just take a look at Windows Server items. Um, most of them um, are um, appear to be legitimate programs. If I go to Windows 10 or other Windows Server editions, I can see all the different inventories and all the machines that are on that filter. So again, this data is all very much in SCCM, but finding a new way to display it, to update it, to report on it, to either highlight what you're doing if you're an engineer or ensure if you're a decision maker, ensure on the back end that things are the way that you need it to be for either audits or compliance purposes, Power BI mixed with um, the, the cloud components of Security Center or something like SCCM on-prem can give you all of that data. And so one of the things that I wanted to take a look at um, as we getting close to kind of near the end of our, um, of our time together is if we look at those events, and I'm going to go back to Identity and Access and Security Center, 
if you recall, I had mentioned that sale logins was a good graph that maybe you want to create this in Power BI so that whoever gets the Power BI dashboard, their morning routine is, I'm going to go check failed logins. I'm going to go check security vulnerabilities missing, our overall patch compliance. I'm going to go check these 10 things. And maybe this is one of those things that need to go on their dashboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to build that dashboard. So I'm going to click the Power BI button. It's going to give me a text file. And in the text file, it tells me kind of how to go about getting this set up and created. But luckily, I've done it enough that I can just grab the data. And then what I will do is launch Power BI, and it'll be up here in just a second. It's probably close. Some of the programs running. There we go. All right, so I'm going to click on Get Data, and notice that all of the sources that I can bring in data, right? So I can filter it based on file, database, Azure, online services. Notice the amount of online services you can bring in data from when you start talking about Power BI. For our purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and bring in a blank query, click Connect. Go to the advanced editor, paste my query that I grabbed from that text file, hit done, hit close and apply. And now it's just a matter of starting to build my graphs. All right, so if I wanted to bring over bar graphs, etc., I could and one of the reports I've already got kind of pre-configured, so I'll just bring that up real quick. Might be a little easier than going through the, the process of architecting a new report. Just give it one second. It should be opening here momentarily. There we go. All right, so failed accounts by login. So this is that same data source we were looking at. Let's say I wanted to put it on a map, right, so I could see where the logins were failed from. Let's say that I wanted to throw it in a bar chart or a, a stack bar chart or a line graph, whatever makes the most sense for your visual representation. And you can start adding in other tiles to this report, or you can start adding in different drill throughs, different filters, different report levels, all those things. Once you get those things the way that you want it, right, you simply click Publish, and based on your login to your Office 365 account, you can publish it to your destination that you have um, in your account. And so the destination that I have, I published to my workspace. And so under Reports, I have a couple of different solutions in here, but the failed logins um, graph that I have, or the report that I have here is something that I could build as part of my dashboard or part of my security officer's dashboard to help shed clarity on what you do or what your engineers are doing to ensure that the security posture of your organization is being met, right? With about 10 minutes left, I want to stop and go ahead and ask for questions. I think you've overwhelmed them with knowledge and things to think about. <laughs> It's cool stuff when you really give it, get into it and start diving deep yeah. into it. Um, I've got a question. Sure. Um, I guess uh, one thing you didn't touch on, uh, which is in the Office 365, which is the security and compliance. I know they, I guess, just launched a new dashboard for that whole section and how all that ties in with uh, some of the stuff that you've shown. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, at Model, there's there's a lot of things that we tend to stay within what I call our swim lanes. So some of the Office 365 components, like the backend Exchange and SharePoint, um, we don't necessarily bring into um, a lot of our different projects. So maybe Jeff can answer that, or we can get somebody to answer that for you. Yeah, we can touch on that uh, for you in, in, a, in another time. I can reach out to my SSPs to try to get you some more data about that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Who's that talking? I'm sorry. Oh, 
Sorry, <laughs> that would help. Uh, this is Rick Van Mater. Okay. With, uh, Brinkman. Thanks, Rick. I'm responded to your email, and I'll uh, I'll get you something on that. Thanks. Any other questions? Um, I guess I'll just throw it out there, Jason. If um, what's a good next step for customers that want to learn this, maybe prove it out in their environment to see if it'd be a good fit uh, if they wanted to work with you guys? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So we have a an offering to bring in a custom dashboard that highlights some areas in your environment, uh, leverages uh, SCCM or your Azure tenants or both to to kind of display an aggregate of what your security posture looks like and some things that you could do to help improve it. So it's it's really a couple hour endeavor, one hour endeavor. It's, it's something that if you're interested in, I would reach out to Steve Bowman who's on the call or Jeff and we can kind of get you connected there. But it's a low cost of entry to, to really understand where you stand as an organization today and a way to kind of get started in some of this reporting. Any other questions? All right, Jason, anything else you want to show demo today? Um, no, no. The That was kind of the bulk of it. I actually thought it was going to take a little longer to get through the material. So um, if you have any questions after the webinar is over, I mean, feel free to reach out and uh, happy to answer them or have a conversation about it in uh, more detail. Well, we appreciate everybody attending today, um, and uh, our next date for uh, the Cut to the Chase is to be determined, but look for an email from your account executive or from me uh, talking about the next subject and uh, the next partner on. But this will continue to be a monthly technical training, and uh, we encourage you guys to continue attending. Thanks so much to Jason and the model team for helping us out with this. We will have a recording available in a little while of this if you want to share it with uh, people within your organization. Um, but Thank you very much for attending, and I'm going to stop the recording now. Thanks. Thank you. Yep.